Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're taking a look at this very cheap um, B850 ITX board from Maxun that I recently picked up. The exact model, at least what it says on their site, is the Maxun B850 ITX Wi-Fi slash ICE. And the reason I picked this up is because it was £122, which seems like a pretty good deal. And there was no videos or at least very little in English, of people unboxing and kind of giving an overview of this motherboard. So that's what we're going to do in this video, do a little unboxing and overview. And I will probably cover the BIOS um, a bit later in a different part of this video. But first, we've got to unbox it and even build a PC with it. But we will just be unboxing it today, so let's get on with it. So as you can see, it says three years warranty on the box. Also has a little thing saying Evolution knows no limit that's a bit of a tongue twister this morning evolution knows no limit it's a six plus two plus one phase power delivery it's obviously ddr5 board because we're on the am5 um socket and this is a b850 chipset and it does give an overview of the rear io which we will talk about and look at a bit more in depth but that is the box so let's get it open So warranty card, SATA data cable, Wi-Fi antennas, And here is the board itself. It's more of a silver, that's why it's ice, I guess. But it's more of a silver than a white. The actual rear IO shield is white. But yeah, it's more of like a silvery colour with um orange accents with an orange kind of theme to it, so like a silver and orange accents. But this is the overview of the board. We have two memory slots. And the capacity is 96 gigabyte, so you can have two 48 gig sticks. And it does say it supports up to 8,000 megahertz for the memory speed. You have a PCIe 5.0 slot, X16, for your graphics card. You do get two M.2 slots. And weirdly enough, this, they, this does look like um, a heatsink for the SSD in the photos. But if you can tell, the SSD actually sits on top of here. So you will need to add your own heatsink and one on the back as well. Also will need a heatsink of your own. You do get 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6 as well. And they are both using a Realtek chip. I think the Ethernet is using a Realtek 8125B slash D. And the Wi-Fi 6 card is a Realtek 8852BE. You also have Realtek Audio as well. I think it's an ALC897 chip. And it does say on the website you get three fan headers. And I can actually see the hidden one now. So you get two four pin fan headers. And you get one hidden here. Which is actually a nice little bonus. Because I came in expecting this to only have two fan headers. So that's good. It's a bit of a weird place to place this. I think they could have put it up here where the this random 12 volt RGB one is. You also get two 5 volt 3 pin ARGB headers there as well. Front panel connector. Front USB, which would be USB 3.2. Get two SATA 3.0 data headers. And you do get a 10 gig um, USB-C on the front as well your front audio is down here and that is about it now let's move on to the rear io unfortunately it is a little bit lackluster but this is one of the cheapest b850 itx boards you will find but let's go over the rear io you have one hdmi one display port you have four usb 2.0s so two here two here 
You have a clear CMOS button, which I decided was mandatory. I wanted a board that had a clear CMOS button because, well, if you're doing any sort of overclocking or tuning in the bars, it's handy to have these on a small form, form factor build because for the most part, the uh, CMOS battery will be hidden on these. So you'd have to find the pins on the motherboard, which could be a nuisance if your build is very compact, which is what ITX is for. Now back to the rear IO, you do get two USB 3.2 ports, you obviously your 2.5 gig ethernet, your Wi-Fi antennas, and you have your audio ports at the bottom. Pretty lackluster rear IO. Would be nice to see one at least one USB C port. Maybe one maybe two of these USB 2.0s being 3.2, but I paid £122 and one pence for this board. And it often fluctuates between 120 to 140. So overall, it's not too bad for that price. You do have an option of going with, if you're looking for a cheap Chinese board, you could go with a Jinyu B650i, but you wouldn't be getting the 5.0 support for the X16 PCIe slot. But overall, yeah, if you're looking for a whitish or a silverish board, that's cheap, then at first glance, this seems okay. But we'll have to see if we have any issues in bars anyway. A few guys curious, I did buy this on AliExpress and the store I purchased this from was the Free C Computer Global Supplier Store. So just in case you guys want to purchase this and want to buy it from someone or a trusted store, that is who I bought it from. I will leave a link to the exact purchase I made of this board in case you're interested. But overall, full of price, not a bad board. From here, I'm going to be building the PC today in this. You won't be watching it in this video. But, providing everything goes okay, we're going to hop into the BIOS in the next part of the video. And then we can just do a quick overview and see what the BIOS is like. Alright guys, so now we're in the BIOS. But I will mention, this is not how the BIOS will look for many of you. At least, that's if you buy it in the near future. Because I am on the latest BIOS version. And this is a completely new overhaul for the UI or graphical interface. Now, updating the BIOS on these Chinese or Maxon boards can seem a little bit confusing, but it is pretty straightforward. The version I'm using for the BIOS is the latest as of recording, which is B1.9D, which, which was released on the 1st of December 2025. And to update your BIOS, you will want to head over to the Maxon website and search for the B850 motherboard that you're using. And then go to support and download the latest BIOS version. You want to make sure you've got a FAT32 USB stick with at least 8 gigabytes of space on it. And I would recommend actually formatting it so there's nothing on there. Now you are recommended to remove all connected devices, so like SATA, SSDs, M.2s. That is the recommendation, but I didn't do so. But there is one important setting in BIOS which you must um, disable. And that setting is called Flash Right Protect. So you want to put this to disable when you're updating the BIOS. This was causing me issues and I had to watch a video, which I will leave a link to that video in the description but you have to disable this and you'll be able to update the BIOS. Once that's disabled and you've got the USB stick with the EFI folder and all its components on it. So once the USB is in and you're in the BIOS or you're restarting the PC, you do need to spam F12 to come to the setup menu and it will ask you what drive to boot from. You want to choose the USB stick and from there it's gonna read the BIOS update on there and do it all for you. You don't need to click anything. You don't need to press escape or anything. Just let it do its thing. Once it's finished, you can type exit, hit enter, and it'll bring you back to the BIOS probably, and you can remove the USB stick and boot onto your normal M.2. Or if you need to turn the PC off so you can reinstall the M.2 or your SATA SSD, you can do that as well. Now I'll put on screen just real quick what the original BIOS looked like. It was very basic, bland, and it didn't have much to it. This is the latest version of the BIOS, which, like I said, 
has an updated UI. It definitely looks a lot better. It will come stock like this. It will come stock, there's a few little options for the background. So this is how it would look normal. I just thought this one looked cool. So I've never seen it on the bars before. But anyway, it's up to you which one you can you choose. You can keep it on here. So straight away, it does give you or does provide you a lot more information in terms of the system status and the specs, kind of how things are running, temperatures, voltage, everything here. This is how it probably look when you boot into BIOS. Uh, you can see I'm using my 9800X3D. I would advise just not touching any of this. And if you're going to be tuning your PVO, you want to come down to overclock and it may be a bit confusing, but you can click on all these different boxes here. So if you wanted to enable precision boost overdrive, you would do it here and you would apply the settings that you want. You can see my settings here, which I've already got a curve optimizer set up as well. Don't copy these settings. You should be adjusting these according to your specific hardware. But that's kind of an overview of the PVO settings and how to access them. You do have an advanced section on the left and you can use the arrows to maneuver around as well. If I go right from here, it'll put me into this subcategory. So we've got the CPU settings, things like SVM, SMT control, C states, all these things are in this part here. You have a few chipset settings, your PCI settings, which obviously will be determine what generation the PCI slot is running for the X16 slot. You've also got storage. You also have your TPM settings, which some of you will actually need on for certain games. Certain competitive titles are requiring TPM 2.0 and secure boot, which you can find in security. If we go back to overclock, I will just mention here, you can set your Expo profile or XMP profile. Now, this is the Clev Fit 6000 megahertz CL28 kit of RAM I'm using, and I've had zero issues running them at the Expo profile, so that's always a good sign. I've had a lot of issues with uh, Chinese motherboards not working with XMP or Expo enabled. So you've got your CPU for precision boost overdrive, your RAM settings here. You also have a timing settings here, which if it's on auto, it's all grayed out. If you put it on expert, it unlocks all the settings for all the uh, sub timings. And there's another little section for more. So if you're into overclocking your RAM and all that, it should have everything inside of here. Voltages on the right. So let's just come back out of here. Like I said, this is just an overview of how your system is running. And then you've got your boot section as well. And you do have tools. So one thing I like about this updated UI that they have added is you can actually finally save profiles so you can save um so you can click on one of these and let's say you're overclocking your ram oc test and then you can save a profile and you know if it's unstable you can roll back to the latest stable profile for example or you can just have a preset in here but that's definitely a helpful or handy feature having um the ability to set profiles because the older versions as far as i'm aware didn't allow for that. Now you do actually have a search uh, function up here as well. So once again, that's something new with this new UI. So overall, pretty good really. You've got your save settings up here. This would be save and exit. You can also press, and it does say down the bottom, F10 with save and exit. And then it's just sent telling us that we've changed the theme. But overall, that is about it for the BIOS. You can obviously change the language, but it is on English and it was on English from the start, which is always a great sign because some of the Jinyu boards come and you do have to change that, which isn't a nuisance. Um, but yeah, but it is nice having it come on as English straight away for us. But I think I've covered most of these things. It seems you can favorite things as well. Network settings. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole BIOS. Anyway, that's a quick overview of the BIOS and how to roughly update it. Like I said, I will leave a full video linked in the description, which will give you a full guide on updating the BIOS. Overall, for £120, I think this board is honestly pretty good for its price, but I'll let you guys decide and give your opinions in the comments. Anyway, I'll catch you all in the next video.